Welcome back to Hazmat Shipping Essentials. I'm Roger with Lion Technology. In our most recent essentials video, we started exploring how, in a manner of speaking, some hazardous materials are more hazardous than others. We talked about hazmat packing groups and how most hazard classes and divisions use packing group 1, 2, and 3 to indicate the degree of hazard for each material, packing group 1 or PG1 representing the greatest degree of danger, and PG3 representing minor danger. We talked about how severity of hazard is a crucial part of classifying a hazardous material and that it affects everything from the proper shipping name you choose to your packaging, shipping papers, and more. We also talked about how some hazard classes and divisions don't use packing groups 1, 2, and 3 at all. In some cases, this is because having only three groups does not provide enough precision to identify all different types of materials in these classes and divisions. In other cases, it's because three groups is too many. If you haven't seen our video on packing groups for the other classes and divisions, I recommend checking that one out now. And with that, I say, Packing groups. Where we're going, we don't need packing groups. To get us going here, let's start at the top with hazard class 1, which could be the most unconventional class when it comes to denoting severity of hazard. Off the bat, you know from our nine hazard classes video that class 1 is broken down into six divisions and that it encompasses everything from handheld sparklers to car airbag systems to weapons of mass destruction. The six divisions of explosives are organized into several compatibility groups identified by different letters, A, B, C, D, and others. This setup prevents certain types of explosives from being stored or transported together or with other incompatible materials. You might see a placard like this out and about. This would be a Division 1.4 explosive in compatibility group S. If you're like me and you never knew why explosives placards had those extra letters on them before, go ahead and hit like on this video. Let me know I'm not the only one. Division 2.3 toxic by inhalation gases are assigned to hazard zones A, B, C, or D based on inhalation toxicity measured by lethal concentration or LC50. As we saw with Division 6.1 poison liquids in our last video, the zones for Division 2.3s provide a very clear upper range to distinguish the most acutely toxic gases. As for other class 2s, like Division 2.1s and Division 2.2s, these are not broken into hazard zones or packing groups. Why not? These are gases shipped under pressure in specification cylinders, and the primary concern here when it comes to transportation, that is, is containing the gas in the cylinder. UN rated cylinders are engineered, built, tested, and regularly retested to make sure that they will contain any gas that's inside, regardless of the chemical properties of the gas. So there's no packing group for Division 2.1s or 2.2s. Really quick here, if you're new to hazmat compliance and you could use some insights to help simplify your responsibilities, Lion's Step-by-Step -step Hazmat Shipper Starter Guide is still available for free at lion.com start. That guide lays out essentials about hazmat classification, shipping names, packaging, shipping papers, incident reporting, and more. It's a valuable resource, especially if you're a beginner. It's free, and there is a link to grab it now in the video description. In our last video, we talked about packing group for Division 4.1 flammable solids, all except one type, self-reactive materials. These Division 4.1s are assigned one of seven generic types, A through G, based on their likelihood to react dangerously during transportation and the level of hazard. Division 5.2 organic peroxides are categorized the same way as 4.1 self-reactives in groups A through G. They even use similarly worded criteria to describe each group. Division 6.2 infectious substances are placed in category A or category B. The category A infectious substance is a material in a form that can cause permanent disability or life-threatening or fatal disease in humans or animals. Category B materials, hold on to your hats, are in a form that cannot cause those things. If you look through the hazmat table in part 172-101, you won't find many options for naming your Division 6.2 materials. The last time I counted, there are five UN numbers and ten shipping names to choose from, so two categories is really plenty. 
Radioactive materials are not divided into packing groups, but there are labels for class 7 materials that feature a 1, a 2, and a 3. There's one very important difference here with radioactives. The 3 designates the greatest degree of hazard, while the 1 label indicates extremely low radiation levels. That's the reverse of what we're used to with packing groups 1, 2, and 3. That covers our non-packing group classes and divisions. Now you've seen how each class and division is divided to indicate severity of hazard, and why getting this step right is so important to transportation safety and compliance. Thank you for sticking with me through the end of this video. If you need training to ship hazardous materials by ground, air, or vessel, and simplify compliance with 49 CFR, IATA DGR, and IMDG code regulations, head to lion.com slash hazmat today to browse online training, public workshops, live webinars, and group training solutions. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss our next Hazmat Essentials video or our upcoming videos on topics like Recra Hazardous Waste Management, OSHA Hazwopper Training, and a lot more. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next video.